Hey, Pod Fam, and hello, Rachel. How are you today? I am doing good, Laura. You really shook it up there by saying hey instead of hello today. I know. I was on my mind all day, so I was just like, I'm going to say hey. Getting casual. Shaking it up. How are you today? I am good, although for our episode today, I need to I need to rant for a moment. Okay. You know, get some things off my chest, and I feel like a lot of our listeners – will relate to this and it's very applicable to our topic this episode and that is just like I've been getting this feeling lately and I don't want to use the word defeated because that is the wrong word but I am feeling deflated if that makes sense Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. the reason why is it just feels like we're all working so hard we're trying to level up our lives and just with how things are it feels like we're never getting any further ahead and yeah it's making me kind of like sad and I'm just having a lot of moments lately like you know the price of gas the price of food um living expenses it's it's so overwhelming and I know this is a very like first world problem I'm acknowledging that but it's it's hard and and I don't think it's just like a millennial thing or a Gen Z thing like there's a lot of people who are older than me who are experiencing the same thing and it's just very difficult to feel secure at the moment and and mm-hmm. hopeful of like your own personal future of like financial stability Yep. You really <laughs> just summed up everything I've been feeling okay. lately. Thanks. Like I, I just I really hope I'm not alone in this, but it's no. just it's been on my mind so much recently. And like I am so grateful. Like I I have a, a wonderful life. I'm I'm very fortunate and I'm very happy. But you know, we all have our, our wishes and our, our dreams of of where we wanna be as we as we mm-hmm. get older. And I'm just feeling like those things are are out of reach at the moment and yep. it's just it's been weighing on me a lot yeah no i know exactly how you feel i've been dealing with that too and also with just the general cost of living right now yeah takes up a lot more of our take home than it ever used to and then you add in where you feel like you're getting a bit further ahead like maybe you were able to save up x amount of money this month and then something happens yes and there goes fifteen hundred dollars or even more yep i feel that yes i'm definitely feeling like that this last week and you know sometimes that expense comes up for a positive reason like education or something like that but you still feel the hit because you're like I genuinely don't know when I'll be able to cover that and continue moving forward do you know what I mean like it just feels like a never-ending hamster wheel yeah yeah like you're like oh man things are finally like getting in place and then someone just pulls the rug right from out underneath you and like mm-hmm. in the bank account sense sometimes where it's just like yeah oh okay I have no further ahead than I was last month <laughs> you know yeah or even six months ago yeah like it's that just one like, hurts <laughs> it's just like yes I'm, I'm so close I'm so I'm reaching my goals and then it's like ooh, surprise bill you know like sorry yeah all that hard work down the tubes. Yeah. No, I know what you mean, but we are going to have fun. We are. With this episode today and give some great tips, but we're not going to spoil what we're talking about yet because first, I want to know what it is that you are drinking this evening. Ooh, yes. So I am back on the rose train. I accidentally left this tea at my parents' house um, for a couple of weeks. Oh, no. And I was like on the rose train so hard and Mm -hmm. I I don't know how but I forgot it and I was so sad (laughs) because I was like no it makes me feel so good like I know I talked about it a few episodes ago now when I first Mm -hmm. brought this tea on that it's just it's so relaxing and calming and I'm really glad that I have it back so Mm -hmm. I've been I've been drinking it all day I'm not gonna lie I I smell like a rose I think beautiful (laughs) If my boyfriend could overhear me right now, he'd be laughing his ass off. But Rachel, what are you drinking today? I have my everyday detox tea again. And I honestly am a little bit obsessed with it. It's really the one that I 
uh, gravitate towards the most. I think there's a bit of licorice in oh, it, I think. Oh, yes. But I also sometimes in a bit am a bit lazy when it's like 8 o'clock at night and I don't want to deal with my single serving infuser. Yes, I understand so I get that. The one, I get the one with the tea bag and it's good. I'm just trying to keep calm but also stay energized. I love so that. So it's good. That is yeah. a good tea. So what are we going to be discussing this evening that was related to my rant from earlier? We are going to be talking about eating healthy on a budget. Yep. Because we're yep. all we're all in the same boat there. Mm-hmm. I don't know if anyone's noticed, but my little grocery bill has gone yep. from like, you know, forty to sixty dollars a week to seventy five to over a hundred dollars. Yep. I'm not buying any more. I didn't buy nope. anything different. I'm buying the same things, but like that is a very large jump in a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. And uh it's just I'm not going back to the rant, but it's just, it's really (laughs) hard because it's all of these little things that we have to buy because it's a necessity and Mm -hmm. all these little increases in price, it really adds up. And I'm definitely noticing a difference in like, I don't budget personally, but like I know roughly how much I spend in every category and it's, it's having an effect on that. Yep. Same with me. Same with me. And As we crack into this, I wanted to gauge your thoughts on it because I know we share similar views and that is that healthy eating doesn't have to be complicated and because of that, we can find some nice ways to save money with it. Would you agree? Yes. Actually, you just took the words out of my mouth because I was going to say, you know, I'm actually finding that eating a more basic, quote unquote, healthy diet is a lot more affordable sometimes Mm -hmm. than trying to get the more, junk food's not the right word, uh, like the more prepackaged, simple foods, like things that Mm -hmm. are like coming in box or they're uh, preserved. Those things are not really as cheap as you might think that they are. And I'm finding it way more helpful for me to get some just really basic staples that mm-hmm. I can still have like real food. Everyone has like an eating plan, like, you know, I, I don't want to use the word diet, but there is a certain way that you like to eat, whether that is vegan, vegetarian, or um, kind of like omnivore. <laughs> Does that sound weird if I say omnivore? Omnivore. <laughs> omnivore. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like we all have our preferences and certain lifestyle when it comes to to eating. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so we just wanted to kind of talk about our tips for this kind of stuff of just how we can all maybe save a few dollars and and still eat like a healthy meal and mm-hmm. The thing is, like, I know a lot of people, they feel like they need to make these extravagant meals mm-hmm. to eat healthy and you need to have, like, the best of the best ingredients and they need to be all from the fancy grocery store. That's absolute bullshit. I'm a firm believer that you should be eating, like, the best quality that is for your budget. And what I mean by mm-hmm. that is not everything needs to be organic like if that is your preference that's fine but don't feel any less if you're not eating organic okay it's it's just not necessary and you're going to be just fine with a more like conventional fruits or vegetables or or meats um so i just Mm kind of want to like take away that stigma that Mm -hmm. you know we should all be making these instagram worthy meals because i can Mm -hmm. guarantee you guys like my meals, if, if I took a picture of them, you'd be like, ugh, <laughs> like you're eating that. And I'd be like, yes, and it's fucking delicious, okay? Like <laughs> it's not pretty, but it's healthy. It's a square meal, and I am full after, and it did not cost me a fortune to make. Exactly. Just kind of touching back on what you said about the kind of pre-made frozen stuff as well, about how it's not as cheap as you might think. It also does not feed you for very long no because oftentimes it's just one meal yes where when it's something that you know you try to buy okay like you know a bag of lentils yes that's gonna last you for freaking ever yes and 
you can make some great healthy meals with those and you know it lasts for a good amount of time and you know one dish with lentils will often feed you for like a whole week so there you go yeah and like as you're saying this about more the the prepackaged foods shrinkflation is real Mm -hmm. like i don't know if anyone's Mm -hmm. been noticing there's a lot less product in those packages than there yep. used to be. And it you know, may be the same price. It may be more expensive, but you are getting less for your dollars. Um, so I know we've, we've used mm-hmm. the, uh, the craft dinner excuse I do love before, the craft dinner. but like, don't yep. you remember those boxes being a little bit bigger? Don't you remember? Well, not maybe the, not the actual box, but there were more noodles in them before because- I do agree. Yeah. Like one box of craft dinner fills literally one bowl. And I'm pretty sure my bowl Uh, did not grow, (laughs) you know? Same price though. Same price. Exactly. And and I feel like this is almost a good opportunity. We got to find the silver lining in a few of these things Mm -hmm. where if you are really trying to be health conscious and budget conscious, I think Mm -hmm. it's a good opportunity to move away from more of those prepackaged items because like – it's really not cost effective. And a lot of the time those products like are loaded with more preservatives and artificial colors and flavors and, and all that kind of stuff. We are not dietitians, um, (laughs) stating that right there, but I think it is better for us to try and get those more raw ingredients and build more simple things from scratch. You know, let's go Mm -hmm. back to just simple home cooked meals, you know, that nothing has to be complicated. Exactly. Exactly. And another thing as well, just leaving the grocery store for a second that I've been finding at least, you have experience with the little local farmers markets, Laura? Yes, I do. Actually I'm so glad you're you're gonna touch on this point. I love my local farmers market. It is not super far from me. And I think I started purchasing from there about four months ago. And in that time, my grocery shop price has been like all over the place, like all over the place. It's Mm -hmm. crazy. And each time I go to this little market, I buy probably the same amount of things, but it's been about, I think, $74 each time. Mm -hmm. And that'll feed us for about a week and a half. Yeah. And you know, that's that's pretty good. Yeah. With like frozen meats and like hmm, not pre-made, but have you ever seen those like soups in a jar where it's like the portioned out ingredients? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get some of those and that'll keep us fed for like three days because there's a lot that you can get there once you add the water. And the price just doesn't change. It's been the same every single time that we've gone to a point that when things are really crazy there from like kind of February, March-ish with the prices moving up and down, we honestly just shopped there because we knew what we were getting when we walked in the door. And I know you have some experience more firsthand with this. So I'd love to hear about it. Yeah. So I have actually a lot of experience in the agriculture and retail sector. And and really like to give you a behind the scenes look here, those, those markets, um, a lot of it is locally produced, which I absolutely love. I will eat local over organic any day. The, the thing is there's there's a lot of work that goes into getting customers in the door. And Mm -hmm. part of that is the pricing. You know, Mm -hmm. granted, there are some items that are expensive. And Mm -hmm. I find sometimes when you go to those really fancy farmer's markets, um, things are more expensive than your grocery store. But Mm -hmm. when you find those like more small town, out of the way places that, you know, might not be Instagram worthy, but they just have, you know, a family working there and and local people. I find those are the best. And going back to people's options of like whether you're going to go to the grocery store or to a local place, the markets have to be very careful with their pricing because if they price things too high or it's always changing, um, people won't come. Like people will literally stop mm-hmm. shopping there. And just go to a grocery store because let's face it, it's far more convenient like to go to a grocery store. It's one stop for everything. You know, some grocery stores have the pharmacy. They've got um, a makeup aisle, their hair care products, like everything. They have Starbucks. Yeah, like there's freaking Starbucks in our, in our <laughs> metros now. Um, mm-hmm. 
where farmers markets, they don't have that, you know, it's a lot smaller of a space and they are very aware of that. So when I was in that position, it was very important to price products fairly mm-hmm. where you had to play your, pay your supplier. Um, you had a little bit of profit for yourself and then it still had to be a price that a consumer would purchase it. So yeah, mm-hmm. I know that there were prices that had not been changed in mm-hmm. years because it was a good selling product. We were making what we needed to from it and we left it alone. Like we weren't out for the cash grab. Um, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I always would really appreciate when people did shop local because those are dollars going directly into the families that mm-hmm. live in the area and um not going to the corporations. So that one's very near and dear to my heart. So I I love it if people can kind of go a little bit more out of the way, you know, get apples that were grown in your town and didn't, Mm -hmm. and okay, this is a bit (laughs) of a tangent, but with the produce, like if you live in a place where produce is grown, you might be, you're probably buying that same produce at your grocery store. The difference mm-hmm. is that produce has been harvested and like packaged. It's been shipped to the city, to a warehouse. Mm-hmm. It has then mm-hmm. gotten back on a truck and <laughs> driven back to your town to be stocked in in grocery stores. Is that actually how it works? Yeah, that's actually how it works. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. Like oh my I, goodness. And, and this is more based out of like, um, oh, this episode's become something so different. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but just a little bit on logistics. So if you have like your local carrot farm, <laughs> I'm going to use that as an example. Chances are that farm might not be packaging for wholesale there. So there mm-hmm. is a packer who buys those carrots. So those carrots are loaded on a truck in bulk. They're shipped to the packer and they're packaged. They mm-hmm. are then sold to grocery stores, which are then in turn shipped to the warehouses. And Mm -hmm. then um, the warehouses that are part of the grocery store corporations then ship those out again to all the local grocery stores. So, oh my. Yeah. So, you know, this is kind of now going beyond finances to more like sustainability and environmentally friendly. It's far better to buy from those local markets because you're getting food that has probably spent a lot less time on a truck going up and huh. down the highways. I never knew that. Yeah. Agricultural facts with Laura. Oh, I yeah. love it. We're replacing tea facts, friends. If you want agriculture facts, I got you. <laughs> she's she's got you. You're really um you were really stretching that muscle. Also, side note, when you go to your local farmers market and they have a lasagna or mac and cheese and they're frozen the uh, amount of time on there for how long it should be in the oven is a bit of a lie <laughs> you should put it in there for longer because <laughs> otherwise the center is going to be cold longer and hotter folks no tin foil. that's all i can say as a tip <laughs> i'm sorry i just i knew you had to put that in I'm there. still you, hurt you're s- still hurt over this oh my gosh it's it's been like a month but i'm so upset you're good are you good now i'm okay I'm, i'll be fine okay All right. So let's go back to buying food. And I feel like a lot of people have a Costco membership and I think that's great. Like I think if that works for you and your family, that's a fantastic option. For my partner and myself, uh, it just doesn't make sense for Mm -hmm. us to like maintain Mm -hmm. the $60 or whatever it is membership and purchase that much in bulk It's just not feasible for our two selves and our limited Mm -hmm. amount of space. So Mm -hmm. I actually gave up my Costco membership and I just want to highlight something as well that being at Costco, like you need to make sure you are seeing the value because a lot of the time you're not necessarily getting savings. You're just buying things in bigger bulk Mm -hmm. Uh, just because I have done price comparisons before. And sometimes things are buy, like cheaper to buy at a grocery store, like just a regular grocery store than it is to go to Costco. Um, mm-hmm. So just be aware of that. I don't want anyone to get sucked into that feeling of like, oh, I need to have a Costco membership because that's how I'm going to save. 
Not Mm -hmm. necessarily. Like it depends on what you buy. So I just want to throw that out there as a bit of a caveat. Costco is wonderful to deal with though because when I had my membership and I saw no value in it, they actually gave me my membership money back. Um, Hmm. So they're they're a pretty cool company. I I don't mind Costco, but I just want – I don't want people to be signing up for memberships when maybe this is something that you'll never see value out of. Fair. So do you think then – in your experience because I know you've had some like more experience in your personal life and professionally with shopping there would you say that it's just more valuable if you have a bigger family I think so like I think if you have a big family um because I have one friend uh shout out to you if you are listening um Mm -hmm. she comes from a family of five and they Mm -hmm. would shop at Costco regularly and yeah to them, they saw the savings because when they got their, um, like, I don't know if it's annual or quarterly coupons back, like that paid for their membership and then some. So I think mm-hmm. if you are like buying that much in bulk, I think it is worth it. But for mm-hmm. like an individual or maybe a couple, it doesn't quite make sense. But of course, like that yeah. is your own decision. I don't know what your food budget looks like or your eating habits. So you know, take that with a grain of salt. There you go. Let's talk about some of our favorite recipes. I have another one before we get into that. Oh, you have another one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Lead us in. This is a little known thing. So this is the um, secret Costco, you guys. Oh, and this is actually going directly to wholesalers to buy your food. You can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can't really? do it with all of them. So just, you know, FYI, some will let you buy as a regular consumer and not as a company. And mm-hmm. then there are other like large food markets. There's one in Toronto that I believe they do let the public in mm-hmm. and you can buy things in bulk at cost. So this is just like a little secret thing. And um, I I didn't see it as much before the pandemic. And and that's kind of why, like, I found a lot of the wholesalers, they opened up to the public because they had like product that they needed to move. And um, with all restaurants closing down, that was really hard on the whole chain because there were products that were going to spoil and they couldn't move them off their shelves. So instead of damaging them out, they just opened up their their warehouses to the public. Now there are limits, sorry, there are minimums on how much you need to spend, but you know, do some research. And if you find a, a food wholesaler, you might be able to buy directly from there. So if you need something like frozen vegetables and you don't mind having like 10 pounds, of it, huh? That's an option. So you got to get creative. Nice. This is <laughs> this is how we survive increasing food costs. People, we got to get creative, and going directly to the wholesaler is one of my favorite ones. Wow. So let's kind of jump into those ingredients that we love mm-hmm. to keep in our fridges, in our freezers, and in our pantries. My Amazing. number one is actually frozen vegetables. Perfect. Whether like I need them or not, if they are on sale, we buy them because. We know Mm -hmm. we're going to use them. They're not going to go bad. And really, like, arguably, they have the exact same nutritional value as fresh. Um, Mm -hmm. Some people argue more. Some people argue less. For me, I'm like, vegetable, vegetable, good. It's good, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Um, Vegetable, good. (laughs) Vegetable, good. (laughs) So, yeah, like, I definitely will buy them and just keep them in stock. We have bags and bags of them in our freezer. Another thing is we buy like the giant bags of rice because Mm -hmm. one of those like, I don't know, five kilogram, 10 kilogram bags will last us over a year. And they're about like 10 bucks for the bag. Other thing I buy is potatoes in like Mm -hmm. 10 pound bags. And funny story, um, I I really needed like a hand mixer because I love mashed potatoes. And my mom Mm -hmm. got me one for Christmas. But of course, oh, that's so nice. I know it was amazing. It's a very nice red one, my favorite color. And Love with it. that hand mixer came a 10 pound pack of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> that's so your mom. I know, right? Um, I love it. Yeah. So, like going back to having super basic meals, I'm like a very like 
uh, meats, potato or rice and vegetable kind of girl. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I keep these things in stock. And with meat, I just go to a lot of different grocery stores and whatever's on sale. That's kind of what I buy. And then I just freeze it. And then we just pull it out that morning and be like, okay, we're having sausage or we're having like roast beef, you know. Um, I'm trying to not buy for just the week. I'm trying to buy things because it's on sale and it's not going to go bad. That's a really good idea. We need to do more of that uh, in our house. Yeah. Um, oh, and the last the last thing I buy is soup. <laughs> if we see soup on oh, sale, yeah. oh my God. you! If you looked in our pantry at the number of cans of soup, it's like almost embarrassing because you would think like we're going to lose power and like we're living off of soup for the next <laughs> five years. So yeah, that's awesome. that's my new philosophy on shopping. I used to be the worst for buying like the day of or like kind of planning the week out. Now I'm just like, it's on sale, put it in the cart. Let's just do it, right? Like it's just so much easier that way. What are your tips for, for the store? Well, I'm about to tell you what um, two technically vegetarians buy for this. Uh, we are dabbling in meat. We are dabbling in meat. But it is a giant bag of lentils mm-hmm. that will last forever. And I love lentils because you can put it in everything. I've put it in soup. I've put it into like chili. We've put it into stews all over the place. I'm pretty sure we put it into tacos once. It was kind of weird, but it happened. Yeah. And kind of same thing as the rice. Like it is a bit of a smaller bag, but you don't need very much no. of them because they do expand when you heat them up in water and yeah they're just really great and they're a good source of protein as well love lentils Mm -hmm. in that similar not really similar realm but I think you can kind of find them in the same aisle it is just stock up on chickpeas and black beans yes oh yes I really really like black beans me and chickpeas Mm -hmm. like we don't really like each other chickpeas and I sometimes get along but like black beans oh so good I know. And again, similar to the lentils with the black beans, I will put them in like literally anything. And the nice thing with those is that you can have hot stuff with them and cold. So both chickpeas and black beans, you can put into like salads and stuff. Yeah, that's like my dad's favorite thing to do. He's always got um, Mm -hmm. like he'll open up a can and then transfer it into a little Tupperware dish. And for the week, he just takes like a a little quarter cup of, of beans or chickpeas for salads mm-hmm. or whatever meal he's having. He just eats them just like that. Nice. Another thing is, and like this is, can be like something that everybody loves or they're kind of like, ooh, you should have left that in college. But we do kind of like to have a stash of just ramen noodles. Oh, my God. Not you're, to necessarily. My boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I caught well, him. See, he was eating ramen <laughs> today. See, I, it primarily started as my boyfriend's thing, but then he started to make really good ramen with them. And I was just like, ooh. That's yummy. But we don't really keep them to like eat them like the just the Mr. Noodles packet, though sometimes mm-hmm. I do do that, but it kind of gives me heartburn, so I need to stop. But usually he'll just take them uh, because he's the cook in this household, thank God, because I know how to make two things, which we will touch on later. And he'll make a nice dish with it with just kind of a noodle base. So we'll toss in the frozen peas. We'll put in um, like some broccoli, like weird stuff. Basically, it's for when we run out of rice, which happens like once a year. And another thing I like to get is just a giant bag of onions. Oh, yeah, because onions last forever. Onions and garlic, you know. Mm-hmm. I love having a, a bunch of, of each hanging around because it really just, you know, spices up a meal a little bit. Exactly. And then, as I was mentioning earlier, this is a bit more on the expensive side, but we do like to keep it in our freezer for probably like once or twice a week. But we do stock up on frozen meats from the farmer's market. Yeah, I think it's always good to have something like that on hand. And um, I kind of want to briefly touch on your kitchen equipment because I feel like okay. what you're cooking with can make or break you like financially mm-hmm. and just you know in time. Um, if you don't like to spend a lot of time in the kitchen, which I don't, if like anything takes me longer mm-hmm. than – um, 30 minutes to make. I'm like, oh, no, I'll starve. Same. Um, no, I'll just like eat chips. And one thing I, I love is my vegetable steamer. And mine personally is from Epicure. 
and love it. Literally, I throw a mountain of frozen vegetables into that steamer. You can also do fresh, but like like I said, I don't actually buy a lot of fresh vegetables at the moment. I unless mm-hmm. I know I'm going to use them, or else they just go bad, and then I'm just mad at myself for for wasting all that money. Mm-hmm. But in my little steamer, it takes four minutes to have Lovely. perfectly steamed vegetables. I love it. Mine is personally from Epicure, but you can really buy them anywhere. It's just like a little silicone dish. Um, mm-hmm. Another one I have is I have the grown-up version of that little steamer in a uh, more silicone roasting pan, and that's what I do the majority of my meats in because mm-hmm. I literally put them in there, maybe add water, add some seasoning, and just throw them in the oven. I never have to check it and everything comes out so tender because it just, uh, okay, that sounds really, uh, it steams the meat, but like it keeps the juices in. So I find it comes out perfect like every time. And then my last thing, um, I, okay, I did not buy this. This was a Christmas present to us, but it was an air fryer. I never, I never wanted to be an air fryer girl. Okay. Like I didn't, I wasn't sure if I believed in it, but um, they make some pretty badass fries and Fair. due to the amount of potatoes that, uh, we have, it's really mm-hmm. expanded our repertoire. So we don't have to eat just like steamed potatoes or mashed potatoes. Now, now we have like potato wedges or potato roasties and yeah, it's really, it's really been a game changer. I know they're a little bit more of an investment and I'm sorry, I don't know how much ours was, but like it's, I think it was around a hundred dollars. So an investment, but I think one that's well worth it. I know mm-hmm. a lot of people make like a bunch of things in their air fryers. I personally have not tried a whole lot because I kind of have my system down and I'm not sure how I feel about cooking meat mm-hmm. in the air fryer because it's at such like hot temperatures. But mm-hmm. for, for potatoes, incredible. Amazing. Love that you're an air fryer girl. That warms my heart, actually. <laughs> I never I never thought I'd be here. And now I'm just like, I feel like my father needs one. <laughs> nice. You know what? He would love it. Oh, my God. He – okay. I'm going to add – this is a bonus item. I personally do not own one, but I feel like I need it, is a cast iron pan. Fair. My dad has a big pan and a small pan. He makes everything in these two pans. Because mm-hmm. they go on the stovetop, they go in the oven. There is nothing that man cannot do with a cast iron pan. Like it's it's incredible. <laughs> so Fantastic. that might be my well, next now, investment to get a cast iron. Well, now I know what to get you uh, for a future gift. Awesome. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, we don't really have anything that fancy in our household. Like I think we have a mini crock pot. Oh, crock pot. Yes. Sorry. That was like the last thing I want to bring up. Everyone should have Mm -hmm. a crock pot because Mm -hmm. I love throwing like a pork roast or something Mm -hmm. in the crock pot at lunchtime. And by dinner Mm -hmm. time, I've got pulled pork. Pretty fantastic. It's amazing. That's delicious. I love it. Yeah. There's so much you can do with a crock pot. Well, before we sign off, would you like to touch on some of our favorite recipes? Because I have one that I need to share. Um, don't tell my mom though, cause she's been begging me for this recipe and I have not given it to her yet. Oh, no. Oh, I know. Well, I think you she guys are, it. you guys are getting it first. She likes it when you just make it for her. Let's be honest. She I don't think she does. actually wants to make it for herself. She just wants you to make it and then give it to her. I think so. I think so. So shall we get into it? Yes. How about you go first? Cause you are so excited to share it. All right. You guys heard it here first before my mom heard it. <laughs> And I make this chicken vegetable soup that literally changed my life and can also feed me for like a week. And again, it's one of those things that can be like as cheap or expensive as you want it to be because the ingredients are pretty basic. So this is going to sound super exciting, Laura. Are you ready? I'm ready. So depending on how much you need of it. It's pretty much like the base or the liquid. It's just chicken broth or vegetable broth if you're vegetarians. And I think I put usually like two or three and that's the liquid base and then one or two stalks, like stock cubes. And then I either use chicken or lentils, lentils if it's vegetarian, or maybe try to put them all together. I'm not sure if that would be good. And then it's onions, parsnips, and then it's carrots, 
and celery. Mm. Those are the vegetables. And then I put in uh, rosemary, thyme, and then this is all such random stuff, basil, and then salt. Love it. That sounds amazing. And it's absolutely delicious. And again, it's just it's one of those things that can be as expensive or cheap as you want it to be. You know, one time my mom wanted me to make it for her and she bought me like $30 chicken. And I was (laughs) like, that's a lot. You're just going to drop this into this soup. And she was like, yeah. And I'm like, well, it's in the freezer now. So yeah, it's my favorite thing. And it really does give you a lot. Oh, there's also potatoes in it, which is why it's really filling. Oh, yes. Got to have those potatoes because you got to have like that starch in there to really beef it up and and make you full. Exactly. Exactly. So I need to make that for you one time. I don't think you've ever had it. I don't think so. I look forward to that. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty good. Like it's kind of, sometimes it tastes differently, like one time to another, because I haven't quite figured out the measurements of the herbs and of the herbs and spices, Mm -hmm. but you know, we'll get there one day. It's a work in progress. (laughs) Yeah. And I feel like a soup, it seems so easy, but it's really not when you try and get into the flavor profiles and add no. the proper spices. Like, you know, some can come out so bland, but then you get that certain little mix of the herbs and it's just perfect. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes you just drop like a whole cup of salt in by accident and you're like, oh, that does not taste good. <laughs> I like things salty, so I'd be like pushing through. I'd be like, this is fine. <laughs> What's one of your favorites? Ah, so one of my favorites. I feel like everyone's going to find out how basic I really am. Um, (laughs) I'm going to share my easy breakfast because if any listeners are like me, it's very hard to eat breakfast and a proper one at that. Um, Mm -hmm. I am so good at just like being like, oh, I'll just wait till lunchtime. Like I don't want to make breakfast. It's it's a thing and I'm really working on it. Unlike my other things that I don't work on. I like that little that little insert. Thank you for that. <laughs> if you know, you know. Um, if you know, you know. And and this kind of goes back to buying uh, just really simple ingredients, and that is a giant bag of oats. Um, so True. I will make oatmeal for myself every morning. It takes literally two minutes, so I have absolutely no excuse not to eat breakfast because that's sometimes why I don't because I think it takes too long. So all I do is take like a half cup of oats, add a cup of water, and then I will buy like a mixed fruit in bulk. Mm -hmm. Like I'll buy one of the bigger one kilogram bags. Um, Mm -hmm. It is like usually around $10, but it lasts for weeks. I find like I can pretty much make one of those bags last almost a month, Mm -hmm. if not a little bit more. And I'm only adding like anywhere from, from half a cup to three quarters of a cup depending on the fruit but some days I'll do like mixed berries or I will do like a strawberry mango um I feel like that's where I kind of get a little bit creative is I'll keep a few of those bags on hand so I'm not eating the same thing every day I'm mixing it up and then the last thing that I will add to that is uh some sort of seed or nut some weeks I do walnut some uh right now I have sunflower seeds And it's kind of like whatever is on sale. And I just throw like a tablespoon in, like I'm not doing very much. And I find even though like the nuts are are expensive and nuts have like always been expensive, it lasts a really long time. So I feel like Mm -hmm. I actually get my value out of spending like five or six dollars on on seeds and nuts. Um, True. And then same thing, like you can always swap those out to give yourself different flavor profiles. And then Mm -hmm. literally I put that in the microwave for two minutes and it's ready to go. So that is my simple breakfast and it's, it's pretty filling. It usually gets me to, to lunchtime, which is great. Nice. Yes. And oatmeal is very good for you. It's got lots of health benefits. I love oatmeal. It's fantastic. I've been having it recently as well. And I kind of miss it, especially I used to like make like the protein oatmeal. Oh, yeah. Which was like kind of a weird thing, but it did taste good at the time. But my healthy breakfast that just uh, – I just remembered that I did this a lot is like the tofu scramble. Have you ever had that or made that? Um, I think I had it maybe once, I believe. Okay. See, this was when my boyfriend was like fully vegan, had a lot of tofu scrambles in the morning. <laughs> I personally can't eat that much tofu. <laughs> there was a lot of tofu in my life this summer, last summer. <laughs> And um, yeah, I mean, 
you can kind of make it however you want to, but you know, it's, it's tofu. It's a nice brick of tofu that you crumble up like, um, like, uh, like you would with scrambled eggs. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember exactly what you put in. I don't think there's a starchy thing in it, which was why, um, my stomach doesn't do well with starches like cornstarch or anything. So usually if tofu has cornstarch with it, I will die inside my stomach. Um, but the tofu scramble didn't need it. And you'll put in, I think there's like chili powder and um, curry powder. Is that the yellow one? Yeah, curry. Curry powder then salt and pepper, I'm pretty sure. And then onions, red and green peppers, uh, scallions. We're really big on scallions. And, you know, it just tastes really good. I'm a big fan. I was actually a pretty big fan. I do prefer it to scrambled eggs. I don't I feel like sometimes I need my scrambled eggs to be done a very specific way. And if it's not done that way, then I feel kind of icky. Yeah. My whole life, I've had a love-hate relationship with eggs. Either I'm all about yeah, them same. or I don't want them. It's very same. weird and, and unpredictable. Um, so I love that there's an alternative for you. Yeah, I'm the same. It's like either you just want to eat hard-boiled eggs with every meal or you're like, get that weird little mushy thing away from me. <laughs> exactly. So, Yeah. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> All right. So my last recipe, um, this one, I have it more for dinner, but it makes a great leftover. And mm -hmm. um, in my family, we call it mush. It's been <laughs> Sounds so attractive. <laughs> I know. This is going back to why like, I don't take pictures of my food people because like, I literally just stir it all together and I'm like, mm, delicious. And My food is literally mush. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's that's just what my grandparents have called it. My mother, like it's just kind of been passed down. Um, and technically, I guess it's it's like a shepherd's pie, but I say way more simple than that okay. because you're not trying to like construct it and then put it in a pan and then bake it after. No, we don't do any of that. Um, all it is is some ground beef and you add a little bit of water just to make it kind of like its own little gravy as you get the meat juices and you mm -hmm. can add garlic and onion um i flavor it all different ways like honestly it kind of depends on my mood i love the old bay spice in there sometimes we'll make it like a mexican style and then you make mashed potatoes and i'm gonna let you a little little secret here on how to make excellent mashed potatoes preferably you have like one of the hand mixer that's how you get them super fluffy but a hand mm -hmm. like um, a hand masher also works as well so mm -hmm. boil your potatoes and you're going to put paprika in the water as they boil just gives it a little bit of Ooh. flavor you don't you don't really have to measure it out i just throw some in there i don't measure things ever um mm -hmm. and then after you drain the water and you just first use your hand masher to break up all the bigger potatoes, throw in some butter, salt, and milk. And if you have your hand mixer, start mixing to get it nice and fluffy. And to get it really fluffy, you just keep adding a little bit more milk at a time. And then you'll kind of watch it transform into these very nice like peaks of, of mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. Um you can get some vegetables. You can either mix the vegetables in with the mush or just have them on the side or have a salad. Me, it depends on my mood. And then you just throw your ground beef on top of the mashed potatoes and and voila. <laughs> that is my See, favorite meal. I'll eat it year round, but it's really good on cold nights. You know what? It sounds delicious and I have no judgments Thank because you. I know it's fantastic. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> Also, side note, um, it wasn't curry powder. It's oh. turmeric. That That's a big – well, not a huge difference, but I think like that's an important yes. difference. <laughs> it is. Sorry, friends. It was turmeric. See, I haven't made it in a while because anything resembling eggs is bothering me at the moment. But yeah. Cool. Um, the mush can confirm it's really good, so yes. you guys should try it. I love it. I love it. I feel like it's one of those um, just old-timey foods, and I don't know if any mm -hmm. other families make it that way or they just make regular shepherd's pie, but mm -hmm. it's better than shepherd's pie because it has like more of its own like au jus to it. Mm -hmm. Ugh, it's also, so it doesn't take as much time. No, it doesn't, and like honestly, it's great for meal prep, and I usually have some leftovers for lunch the next day, so there's lunch already done. There you go. Yep. You're winning. Yep. I'm You're very winning. creative with ground beef or ground anything. <laughs> it's a staple in my freezer. Fantastic. So we've really been kind of all over the map. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. This episode did not come out 
this did, this did not come out how we had planned it, but here we go. We uh, touched on yeah. a lot of things tonight. I hope you found some of these tips helpful. Um, mm-hmm. Again, always share your tips and tricks to help save money right now because food is getting ridiculous and mm-hmm. we all just need a little bit of a break. Yeah. And let us know if you want us to make a agricultural fact with Laura a regular <laughs> segment. I got some tea on the industries. There you go. All right. Well, if you feel called to, please give us a follow on our Instagram. It is the tea with Laura and Rachel. We are actually regularly posting right now. <laughs> yes. It's a, it's a huge moment for us. It is. Please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And, you know, just DM us, leave us some comments, let us know what you're thinking about this episode and any of the episodes that have come before, and if there's anything you want to hear us chat about, and we will do our best to discuss it. And with that, live like tea. Live like tea.